Check this out, this is a working AND circuit implemented on a breadboard just using transistors and resistors and a couple switches. If we plug it in, you can press one button or the other button and it doesn't do anything. If you press both, it lights up. So let's get into the details of making AND gates from scratch. First, a quick overview. If you need more theoretical background, check out the not gates video that I did three or four videos ago. But we'll start with a real life demo of an AND circuit with transistors. You already saw a sneak peek of that. We'll go through the materials we need to build this, the truth table, which describes the exact behavior of an AND gate, the logical diagram, which we can do in Logisim. It lets us play around with the gate interactively. The circuit diagram in CircuitJS will do resistor transistor logic to build this in real life. And then we will take that circuit diagram and put it on a breadboard. Before we get any further, this is page key. So we have to talk about take back tech. In short, the world runs on tech developed behind closed doors. It's a tall stack of abstraction and it's very complicated. Huge companies create this technology and maintain this stack for us, but we don't do it for free. We pay them lots of money to pay expensive engineers lots of money. Maybe we can trust them. It's certainly good that they're doing this because they're building great technology for us to use in our everyday lives. But do they have our best interests in mind or do they have their profits in mind? Either way, it's good to have a plan in case our best interests do not align with theirs at some point in the future. The more we learn about tech, the less that big tech companies that, by the way, nobody elected have leverage over us. Anyway, let's get back to a real life demo of this AND circuit with transistors. So as we saw before, you can hit one button or the other, but only when you hit both digital inputs, it becomes a one. If you look a little closer, you have two transistors. We have our one kilo ohm resistors here and our 220 ohm resistors over here. And these buttons, of course, are simulating digital inputs. So they have the positive voltage coming in and the LED is simulating a digital output. So all this circuitry in the middle is the gate and you can see it works as expected. So everything that we need should be right here in this picture. I'll leave some affiliate links in the description if you're interested, but we do need two NPN type transistors, bipolar junction transistors. I'll be using two N2222. We need two one kilo ohm resistors. Those are right here, brown, black, red, gold. As you can see, we need two 220 ohm resistors. Those are right here. Not pictured as an Arduino, also not pictured as a breadboard. We need two breadboard buttons. Those are right here. We need an LED, that's right here. And of course we need a bunch of jumper wires which are all over the place, but you don't have to worry about the size or the color of these. Now here's the truth table for AND for two inputs A and B. If you know what the word AND means in English, then you know what the truth table is. It's only true when A and B are true. Otherwise, it is false that A and B are true. Now let's look at the logical diagram using Logisim. So if you pop open Logisim Evolution, Go ahead and grab an AND gate from the toolbox there and put two input bits onto the work area and put one output bit and connect everything up. Now click the hand tool and you can flip the bits to see the output change and seems to match up. Now let's look at the circuit JS diagram where we built a resistor transistor logic circuit. Okay, so open up circuit JS and you can get the source for this on GitHub, but I'm gonna paste this in, import from text and here's our circuit. We can play around with it you click the switch, it only lights up when both are on, which makes sense. That's all there is to the circuit. So how do we actually implement this circuit diagram on a breadboard? Well, we have a bunch of things coming from plus five volts here. First of all, we have directly connected the collector of this transistor. We also have both switches connected directly to the five volts. So over here, you'll see that the five volt is powering this upper row here. And we have the first switch connected as we do right here. We have the second switch connected as we do right here. And we also have positive going to the collector of the top transistor. Next from the output of the switch, we go through the 1K resistor to the transistor. You can see here, we're going through the 1K into the base of the transistor. That middle pin is the base pin. Similarly, the other switch is going through a resistor to the base pin of the other one. So you can see that right here. And you'll notice that these buttons connect across here like that. It's all one row. Now we can see very simply that the two transistors connect to each other. The emitter of one goes to the collector of the other. So that's right here. This one goes out and goes back into the other one. And then the output of that other transistor, the emitter goes to a resistor that goes to ground. We can see that here. It goes to this row with a few things going on. First of all, the resistor 220 goes to ground. Second of all, we go to a diode, which then also goes to a resistor and ground. So you can see that from the same area right here to the diode, to the resistor, and to ground. Everybody goes back to ground. And that's all there is to this circuit. That's it. That's all I had for you in this video. As a quick recap, we saw a working end circuit. We reviewed the logical diagram and truth table. 
we created the circuit design, and then we implemented that circuit on a breadboard. If you like this type of thing, come take back tech with us here at PageKey. We're constantly rebuilding things from scratch, learning more about self-hosting and becoming more self-reliant in the technical realm and much more. See you for the next video.